Good morning, all you wonderful, lovely people. Uh, also, good morning to you uh, not so wonderful, not so lovely people. So you're all welcome. Anyone's welcome to the show. So good morning to our first session of Open Door. So um, what's it about? Open Door is all about answering your questions, any questions you've got to do with property development. And of course, I'm here with Ian Child. Good morning, Ian. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Ian, do you want to tell people a little bit about what we do here at Property CEO? Yep, so our day job here is basically training people how to become uh, successful small-scale property developers. So I think many people really like the idea of developing property, but they, they often worry that it's uh, maybe it looks a bit risky, a bit complex, uh, lots of moving parts. So our job is to give them the support and the training uh, that they need to do it as, as safely and as successfully as possible. We also think that there's a rather amazing opportunity lying just around the corner right now, which is going to create a lot of wealth and opportunity for developers. So uh, we want to find, uh, help people find out about those opportunities and, uh, and also to see if development might be a good fit. Excellent, good stuff. Now, we know there's a lot of doom and gloom still going on, although, uh, you know, we're opening up a little bit out there. Things are getting a bit better for us, uh, but possibly heading into a recession or almost certainly. Uh, but in here, this is all about positivity. This is a half full zone between these uh, these four walls or how many walls you've got in your room, wherever you are today. It could be outside, so there's no walls, I guess. So uh, it's all about positivity. It's all about good energy. We've got a great guest on today who's going to come on in a minute. But first of all, give us a quick wave uh, and make sure you can hear and see us, please. Give your hands up if you can hear and see us. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, brilliant. Well, an all-star crew. And lots of comment, comments coming in this morning. Uh, Magenta's put, yes, he can hear us. Magenta, what you've got to do is, is wave. And Magenta says, uh, Ian, good morning. Just got out of bed, look. <laughs> Ian's just got an out of bed. Yeah, yeah I appreciate that. Uh, this is uh, not quite, this is the uh, just haven't had a haircut for months look, actually, that I've been, uh, I, I think, looking around, it has caught on, um, although Richie's, Richie hasn't really embraced the, uh, the national mood uh, in the haircut stakes. But, uh, but yeah, things I suspect may get worse before they get better. So uh, watch this space, tune in every week to see uh, yeah, how much more I look like I've been dragged through a hedge uh, backwards. I mind you, there's a comment in here from Ritesh. He says, uh, I was quite cozy in bed when your video came up on Facebook this morning, Richie. You reminded me of Sergeant Major Windsor Davies in It Ain't Half Hot Mum. I just had to get out of bed. Thanks, Ritesh. I'm sure that's a compliment. Anyway, Gert says, good morning uh edward says how easy is oh no that's a question um that's another question edward that's a question already we're not ready for questions yet blimey guy good morning says dom good morning guys says edward and jess good morning to you all good morning gavin uh and debs and richard said they're up at five o'clock e eating bacon sandwiches and coffee and they're not even sure what to do read ian's book uh come on this program do an industrial conversion course or what so um guys yeah good morning um edward said he said sorry i was up early Sorry, you're up early. I'm not sure why you're apologizing, Edward. You can put every time you want. And Trish says, good morning. So today, uh, we've got a fantastic guest on today. Um, well, he's okay. You know, I mean, you know, we, we could have done better, but obviously we had to see who we could get. You guys asked us to, um, it's your show, as you well know, and you asked us to bring on a funder. You asked us to bring on someone that could help fund your development projects. Um, you asked us to bring on someone that was pleasant and friendly. Um, Anyway, so what we've managed to do, we've managed to get Mike Bristow on this morning from uh, Crowd Property. Mike is the CEO and co-founder of Crowd Property. He's quite a nice guy. I think he's going to be OK. So uh, if, uh, if you're interested, give us a wave if you want us to bring Mike on. We'll see if he's there. Give us a wave. Oh, oh no waves. Lots of waves. No waves. OK, <laughs> well, let's see if Mike's around. Hopefully Mike's uh, ready to join us. Um, Mike, are you there? Can you hear us? Hello, yes. Thank you for the stellar introduction there, Richie. Excellent. Turn your camera on for me, Mike, and hopefully we can see you. Excellent. Hi. Good stuff. Good morning, Mike. Give us a quick wave. Hands up if you can see and hear uh, Mike Bristow, please. Yes, they all can. Excellent. Excellent. Michael, uh, yeah, well, I mean, I always like to do a nice introduction to people that, um, that you know, I know quite well. So, you know, but genuinely, it's a pleasure to have you on here. Um, Mike, welcome to the show. Do you want to give a quick introduction of who you are and what Crowd Property do? 
And guys, whilst he's doing that, please put your questions in the chat box and make them really difficult for Mike so we can uh, give him a hard time on a Saturday morning. Mike, tell us a bit about yourself and Crowd Property. Sure. Um, well, Crowd Property is my favourite topic, so I can bang on for hours, but I won't so we can get through questions. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I think it really resonates with what you said just now, um, which is there's an opportunity in the market right now. Um, and there is quite a barrier to entering into property development. Um, so it's great what you guys are doing to help people get over those barriers uh, and working with them. Um, and um, um, the, the, the opportunity right now is multidimensional. Um, it's, it, when I started investing in property in 2002, you could buy a flat and you could rent it out. And then you could take out some capital and do it again. The big uh, trend in the market that we see is investors becoming developers now developer is a spectrum term you know it's investors buying something adding value to it keeping it and then uh extracting capital from that added value okay and that enables you to a do more things b build a portfolio um and i that's a massive trend in the market since we set this up anyway so um, we founded uh, Crowd Property, three of us, in 2013. Um, we were investors and developers ourselves uh, for many years. Um, there's 75 years of investment and development between the three of us. And quite frankly, we found raising funds for property projects in 2013 a pain in the ass. Okay. Um, very self-serving financial institutions asserting that you're lucky to get some money out of us. Um, in, in, in the market um, and, 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 and not helping, certainly not acting like a partner. And we said, and, and, and you can see in the data that the drop off of, of, of contribution to housing from small developers has been staggering over the last 10 years. And it's, be, it's not because it's not an attractive market, it's because there's been huge barriers around funding. So we said, right, okay, we can set up a better lender. We know exactly what property people want. So we built it, um, and that's first and foremost our challenge. Build the best property project lender in the market that is a specialist and does it brilliantly and serves the needs of customers rather than the needs of the institution. Then we said, right, where should we get the capital from? Because um, if you're going to lend some money, you need to uh, get it from somewhere. And so and peer to peer lending had very much come about uh, uh, great businesses like Zopa and Funding Circle. Um, funding circle funds small and medium-sized businesses. So we said, let's let's use that peer-to-peer -peer model because the great thing about that is because we're not a big bank with big infrastructure, with big legacy IT systems, with regulatory cost of capital, with retail branch networks, and big offices, and all of this. If we if we build this efficiently with technology and purpose-built, we could de uh, deliver a better a better deal for borrowers and a better deal for investors. And the technical bit of that is the most efficient matching of the supply and demand of capital. And that's what we work very hard every single day to do. And technology can't be the only thing in that. Some sectors it can be. But we use technology for efficiency in our business. Uh, loads of analytics, data, workflow management, et cetera, incredible in-house build platform. Um, and then we use expertise for effectiveness because you need to understand property. Um, and therefore our positioning is property finance by property people. And bizarrely, that's never really happened before. That's game changing. And what we do is we work in partnership. So right from sort of early application process, we'll work with you. Um, you know, we don't need to see the polished deck. We'll say, hey, look, this is good, but you might need a bit more skill set here or, uh, actually, your cost, uh, you know, I budget a bit more there. And, uh, and it's a partnership through that, right through the project. I mean, nobody ever phoned Lloyd's Bank and said, I've got a problem on my project. Can you help? Um, you know, whereas, I mean, well, and firstly, you wouldn't speak to a human. Um, the slim chance of speaking to a human, it wouldn't be anyone that knows anyone about anything about property. It'd be an administrator attached to a computer that largely says no. And if you did speak to someone uh, that was knowledgeable, all you'd hear is a rustling for the contract and the first charge security papers, 
not the attitude of saying, yep, that's a problem. Don't worry, though. We've seen it X times before. Just do this. That should help you out. Or, yes, that's a big problem. We'll be on site tomorrow because it's all about problem and we're going to crack it together. That's the principle here. And now more than ever, that's what you need. You need a funding partner because what happened in 0809 was RBS repossessed everything and fire sold it. Okay. Uh, the, you know, the major institutions make stupid decisions. That's never in the best interests of property. And we always act in the best interest of the property, the project, the borrower completing their project. So, Mike, was that your quick introduction? <laughs> oh, he's frozen now. He's back again. Can you hear us, Mike? <laughs> yes, I can. That, 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 that was actually the quickest I've probably ever done it. <laughs> I, I know that, Mike. I've heard you before. Guys, so we're ready for some questions with Mike. Uh, Mike <laughs> keeps going in and out a little bit. If it does, please just bear with us. Um, but uh, anyway, so I mean, guys, just a quick shout out to a few people that's on. Simon, Jacqueline, Hitan, Deb, Richard, Deb, Edward, Julian, Bob, uh, Jim, uh, Joe's on. Morning, Joe. Joe, Two Joes, several Joes. Him and her. Jess, Ava, Dom, welcome to you all. And by the way, we talked about the haircut earlier, and Ranjit says content is more important than haircut. That's absolutely true. So let's go with our first question. Mike, are you ready for a question? Yes. Good. Question from Gavin. Gavin says, I have a question for Mike, which is actually really good, Gavin, because Mike is our guest. Uh, apart from a, a credible professional team and a deal that gives 20% profit, what other criteria would you look for specifically in a CEO of a development company? So this is one of the areas where we're quite different. OK, so um, traditional lending is a lot about tick box activity. So and one of those tick boxes in the past has been, have you done the same project, uh, same size project, in the same postcode five times in the last 12 months. You know, barely anyone ticks that box. Whereas we have funded first time developers. Okay. Now, why have we funded first time developers? It's because part of the reason is because we get to know the people very, very well. Okay. And one of the things we look for is an ambition, a passion, and a motivation in property. Human factor. The biggest risk with a project is that the human mucks up and fails to deliver okay and so what we want to see from applicants when we speak to you yes we actually speak to you in the process um, i know it's a bizarre concept in this in this market we want to see your vision we want to see a path that you're saying right i want to be in property for 10 15 20 years this is my bigger picture vision i want to be doing you know projects that are very similar but many many more of them to scale up the size of my project and we want to see that and we want to see you building a team around you okay so it is so much more about 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 you as a person you as an individual and you and your strategy vision passion etc than a load of tick boxes i could give you now one of the other elements as you mentioned team okay and and we will back first time developers for example, a, borrower, a borrowing team we backed four or five times now, we funded their first development and they are very, very good developers. It's a very good decision. Why did we back their first project? Well, the partnership was a was a was an architect for 30, who had 30 years experience and an IT project manager. OK, and um, I, you know, any any project is is just a project to be managed. And so that's what we want to see. We want to see project management skills, organizational skills, as well as that passion. And if you've got a background in that and a demonstrable background in, uh, on that, you know, you may not uh, meet the tick box criteria of other lenders, but we'll really get on and we'll um, and, and there's a good chance we'll back you. Brilliant. Gavin, hopefully that has answered your question. Ian, do you want to pick up the next one for us? We've got one here uh, from Trish, actually. Is, uh, Mike, could you please explain the process? So what's the process that uh, a first time uh, developer would go through uh, with Crowd Property to get funding? Cool. So 
there are so many elements of this process that we have designed from scratch because that's what we wanted. So first of all, um, we've got an application form online. Now, I've just I've just talked about relationships and people and things like that, and then I say go and fill in an application form. Um, now, it's different to that. So I, we were fed up of filling in 20 page buy to let mortgage applications. Uh, you can you, I can underwrite that with a postcode and a door number. Uh, based on our tech. Um, so our form, we applied the principle of the Churchill quote that I love, which is, sorry for writing you a long letter. I didn't have time to write you a short one. Okay. So we wrote down everything that we could ever ask you for about your development project, and then we just cut everything out to say, we can give a great answer with this bit of information, our technology and our expertise, and that will help people. Now, we, want, we will ask more questions further down the line, but we wanted to reduce the barriers as much as possible for you to get a view from us. And what that means is you don't need to wait until you've, you've, you've packaged up everything to apply. Go onto the form, put a project you're looking at, uh, looking at okay, into that form, and we'll tell you one of two things. One, we're not sure about this because because of these challenges. OK, you may have seen some of those challenges you may not have done, but we'll give you a view and it may inform you to say, actually, good point. I missed those. Uh, I'll forget about it. I'll save my time digging around on that one. I found one. I'll go find another one. Right. Or the answer is yes. And if the answer is yes, we've seen billions of pounds worth of projects. And if it's yes, it's that's a great project. OK, so so drop everything focus on it. Then, if that's early stage enough, we'll give you a letter of proof of funds uh, or similar that you could go to the vendor and negotiate a better deal. We've had people achieve tens of thousands of pounds of price reduction versus the highest offer because they've had that in place um, and they put together a good packet. So you apply, then there's a due diligence phase and we'll ask you more, more questions, but relevant questions based on the risk that we will probe. Then we will prepare that to list on our platform. We will list it on our platform. And uh, staggeringly, the last 14 projects we've put on our platform during lockdown have sold out in an average of 41 seconds. On Thursday, yeah. on Thursday 400,000 pounds was invested in 20 seconds. So, you know, don't worry about the funding bit. Uh, it's the key message there. We've got so many investors and a huge diverse pool of investors from from my mother and my mother-in-law, uh, literally. So I'm no very scared of. Uh, yeah, <laughs> through to major global institutions. Um, so we've got a huge diverse source of capital, and that has enabled us to be one of the only lenders in the market through lockdown. Everyone else has shut up shop because they're very exposed to single sources of capital. We've got diverse sources of capital. So we're still funding very good projects. Then we close the funding, we draw the funds in, um, and we complete the transaction, and then we'll, we'll uh, release funds to you through the project. So we're funding the, the buy bit and the, 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 the development bit. Okay. The quickest time we've done all of that is six days. Okay. Now, that was because that's something I don't recommend. Someone got in touch with us saying, oh, I, I've Yesterday, I went to an auction and I bought something. Uh, I don't have funding for it. Right? <laughs> don't, don't do that. Uh, <laughs> uh, but if, if you do, then we can help. Um, but, but that's a good example of, of where, you know, we can, we can, we're never the critical path. We can move very, very quickly. Um, and, uh, and, and, and crucially in that example, again, this is why, this is just another illustration of why it's so important to work with property people. Okay. Technically, we had 27 days to complete on that. Um, and we said, we're not going to do that in 27 days. We're going to do it in 10 days. And we're going to have some contingency because nobody likes more stress in their life. Okay. And we know that things uh, go wrong through purchasing process, but also in the project itself. So let's give ourselves contingency. As it happened, it went smoothly. We did it in six days. So don't worry about the time. We will guide you through the process. We will speak to you and help you. You don't need to fear us, um, as so many people fear the evil lender that sits in their ivory tower in Canary Wharf. 
Good stuff. Good stuff. Excellent. Trish, hopefully that's answered your question. Mike, we've got two questions in here, very similar. So I'm going to read them both out. The first one's from Jin. And Jin says, uh, and good morning to you, Jin. But Jinder is actually Jin. And so I know who Jin is, Ian. You know who Jin is. Uh, no, but uh, sorry, Mike, that's just an aside. Uh, how do you calculate what you will lend in rough terms in percentage to purchase and development? And then Dom's question, which I think is pretty much the same. So Dom says, do you have an LTV criteria uh, and do do you fund in arrears? So uh, a couple of questions together there. Would you better pick them up for us? Yeah, certainly. So uh, let's let's take ourselves out of COVID-19 times for a second. Um, so uh, normally what we will lend is up to 70% of the purchase price and up to 100% of the development cost. Okay. One thing we don't have is a um, uh, is a limit on loan to cost. Most lenders have a limit to uh, loan to cost. We see that as an output metric, not an input constraint. Okay. So, for example, uh, the guys I mentioned earlier, they did a, they built a 30 bed uh hmo co-living scheme in plymouth where the purchase was about 250 grand uh the works were about 1.1 million something like that and we lent 96 percent of those costs um and that's and 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 we were we can do that because we know that, that there's plenty of security cover on the ltv and the lt gdv which is the loan to gross development value um so they're, they're non-COVID-19 times. Uh, uh, currently, we are working with our borrowers and our pipeline uh, to say, look, um, you, you know, we can't lend quite as much because there are risk factors, especially against pre-COVID valuations. Um, but we work with them to say, well, look, why don't why don't we work, why don't we uh, agree with the vendor that you'll complete this in three months' time? Or um, you know, is this still a stackable deal? Let's reassess it uh, or whatever. If it is, then fine, you know, we'll lend to 60, 65%, something like that. Um, but these are slightly extreme times. The point is nobody else is in the market lending. Um, so we do have to draw back a little bit. We, you know, clearly we need to risk manage as well. Uh, and, and it depends on timing as well of the valuation. Um, we then, uh, so then we will start, uh, so, the second question there um, was, uh, how do you release those funds effectively? Or do you fund in arrears is the second part of the question. Yeah, so so w we will release funds with project progress. Okay, so the development bit, the bit that funds the works, we will release that in arrears based on validated progress. But typically, those arrears are not payment arrears, they're works arrears. Because what you'll get is a, your contractor um, who will bill you at the end of the month for progress in that month. And that end of the month bill, we will meet. So the majority of your expenditure, you will not be working capital negative. Uh, we, will, we will work with you on that. Great stuff. I think what it was, Mike, knowing Dom, he probably wanted an upfront payment so he could go and buy a new car. Um, so I don't think, Dom, you can do that. That's not going to be possible. We, we, yeah, it's, it's quite funny. Uh, we, we, yeah, we, we sort of got a phrase in the, in the business that the, uh, you know, you can, we'll, 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 uh, you can reward yourself with the Porsche at the end of the project, not during it. Um, <laughs> I so. like it. Sorry, Dom. Sorry about that. That's way it's worth a try. Uh, and, and, and Rich, Rich don't are... judge everybody by your own, uh, your own standards there, mate. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm not really into cars anyway. Um, yeah, Trish says, uh, she says that was a great answer. She absolutely loved that. Thank you very much. Uh, Dom's now put an insult back to me and said he wouldn't be a hairdresser's car anyway. Dom, I've got rid of the Audi TT. That's, DT, that's moved on. And it wasn't a hairdresser's car and I quite liked it. So pack it in. Okay. Ian, yeah. to an Customers always right though, eh? Um, yeah, we've got a couple of questions that are quite uh, quite similar. Uh, let's have a look. We've got uh, one from Jin. Uh, what type of developments are you lending to? And then one uh, one from Pardi. Uh, uh, hi, Mike. As a lender in the current climate, is your preference to lend on projects for build to rent rather than build to sell? Oh, good question. Great question. First question, we fund anything that gets you from 
purchasing an asset and then either selling it or refinancing it onto term finance. So I mentioned earlier how many investors are buying something, adding value, refinancing onto term, keeping and yielding and repeating. Um, so literally anything, whether it's uh, a bridge because you need to move very, very quickly, um, whether it's an auction purchase, um, whether it's a light refurb, whether it's a, uh, a brand new build, whether it's a uh, commercial to resi conversion, basically any project. And, and, and if you look, we've got, um, we've always done everything. And then, and then this was a, a sort of a, a, a business secret uh, uh, was that uh, when we said we just did everything, um, we would get people phoning us up and saying, oh, does that mean you'll fund new builds? Or will you fund an HMO conversion? Or so, yes. So then we got our designer to, to design some icons um, and and just to, just to outline exactly all of the different products that we did. OK, and that's really important because humans do pigeonhole things that, you know, they need that clarity. So anything we will fund and, and, and uh, that includes the sort of bucket uh, that we've got is called special situations where basically it's like, look, throw the most complex stuff at us because we really like it. We're property geeks. We'll structure you anything. You know, one good example of that was a was a, a portfolio of ten Victorian houses from a tired landlord that were all single let, bit bit uh, worse for wear, and the borrower wanted to buy that portfolio, do a rolling refurb across each of them, exit three to four of them, keep six, and go and 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 end up with no cash in. Um, and um, and we structured that exact deal uh, in a really really cool way. So basically, anything, any situation, will structure you a, a, a product. Um, but one of the things that's quite hot at the moment is development exit uh, and development finish and exit product projects. So where people are, you know, where the project's taken a bit longer um, and things have taken time and more further delayed through COVID nineteen, and you start to uh, move on to devious hidden fees and penalty rates of many lenders out there and and we help people sort of refinance that give them plenty of time to to, to to exit that take the stress off again it's really important that you know the finance stress is 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 something just to take out of your life um, as a property person um, it's really important you need to focus on the finding deals the doing deals okay let us do the finance stuff um, can I just, the, Mike, can I just uh, check w w on that point? So uh, you're saying that if uh, if a developer has got to the end of their current funding and they're in that rather difficult situation where they need to refinance or have a discussion about extending the lending, uh, you're there potentially to help in that situation? Yeah, and we've done that quite a bit recently. We've done that uh, quite a bit. We've even done, I mean, the most shocking, um, and there are so many practices, bad practices out there in the market at the moment uh, by lenders really damaging the reputation. We've had a couple of projects very recently that came to us where the existing lender refused drawdowns, stopped the drawdowns on the project for no reason of the project, nor the borrower. It was the market conditions. Um, and that's just destructive all rounds to everyone. Um, so we pick those up, we refinance them, we drew, uh, release the funds and, you know, we've we've been customer focused about it um so yeah it's 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 going to be needed a lot and and one of the reasons one of the reasons for this and it's really important as a general rule around funding for projects okay this is unregulated lending okay you don't have the fca scrutinizing every lending contract in your best interest you are a professional taking out an informed contract so therefore, that lender can write anything into that contract. Okay. And we have seen so many devious hidden fees. We know that about in our survey, about 18% of people who knew the penalty rate, interest rate of their uh, last facility, knew that it was over 3% a month. Okay, you know, you've got to read everything. And that's why number one in the requirement from anyone around project finance is transparency. Okay. And the market has failed that for years. We are clear and simple with our pricing, our outlines, our terms, our contracts. Um, you know, just look out for 
the players in the market who are basically looking to monetize that single loan. Okay, they want to profit from that single loan. We want to work with developers for 5, 10, 15, 20 years and, and, and build a, a, a brilliant partnership to save everyone time. Good stuff, good stuff. Excellent, thank you. Um, just a little statement from Ranjit. Ranjit from Property Investor News is on. He always likes us to mention that he's from Property Investor News. He's just doing, it's just a lame excuse to come and advertise. But he does say, he says, um, he says it's true what Mike says. I say businesses don't fail, humans and people who run them do. That is why it's so important to educate yourself, become knowledgeable and stay informed by attending these webinars. I think yep. Randy probably also says by buying Property Investor News as well, but he hasn't added that on, but I'm think pretty certain that's what it's. Yeah, it's, a, it's a great publication. Uh, okay. So I- um, Just pack it in. <laughs> you owe me a tenner, Randy. Yeah, <laughs> you owe us a tenner every time we mention your name, Randy. That's another tenner. Okay, got a question from Simon. He says, good morning, Mike. That's nice and polite, isn't it? He says, I'm new to property. Do you think now is a good time to get into property development? So, um, my answer to that is any time is a good time to get into property um, if you take a long term attitude to it. So, my motivation for being in property, I, I started many, many years ago and I now have four children. and. Um, my property portfolio is a legacy for them. Um, and if you think long term, then any time is a good time to enter. Now, what do I think will happen over the coming uh, over the coming year or so? Um, we this will be different to 0708. OK, in 0708, what you had was was a lot of sellers, including the banks who had to repossess because of their capital position. Okay, like RBS, who just repossessed and sold, fire sold everything. And what you had then was very few buyers because there wasn't a mortgage market. Okay, so you got a massive extreme balance. Okay, sellers versus not many buyers. Right. And and what that uh, so that's what drove the 19% on average fall across the UK. Okay. Now in this market today. I don't think personally we'll see that because the supply and demand balance is different. The mortgage market will be back quicker because this wasn't driven by a, a systematic failing in the financial system. Okay. And we haven't had 10 years of big growth leading into this shock. That's what happened in 0708. Okay. And actually, if I, and we, our analysts have done the, uh, done the, um, uh, done some great piece of work recently where we are currently, if, if you don't, if you take the nationwide house price index, okay, and you don't adjust for inflation, okay, then it looks like we're about 17 or 18 percent above 2007 prices. But if you adjust that for inflation, we're actually 16 percent below. 07 values okay and the same as 2015 the same as 2010 and the same as 20 uh, 2005 so that means there's not a big load of growth to wipe out okay and the supply and demand outlook going forward is better than 0708 i'm not saying it's great i'm saying it's better than 0708 and the recovery of the financial system will be better than 0708 so what that all means is I don't think there'll be deals of the century, but there'll be good deals to have. There won't be that many of them because a lot of sellers will wait because they know that the financial system will come back into full swing. So, look, there will be good deals out there, number one. Number two, if you want to do property stuff, you need to be, a, you need to be able to add value to property. Capital growth is not going to go crazy again. Okay, so you need to spot the uh, projects. You need to have the toolkit and the capability to add value, and, and you need to have a focus and a plan as to how exactly you're going to go from acquisition through to either keeping or selling or whatever. Okay. So, yes, it is always a good time. Yes, I think there are good opportunities now, but and, and, and you're in the right places. Yeah, learn about it, okay? Because adding value to property is not straightforward, 
but it is a way to grow your portfolio quicker if that's your end game. That was a long answer. Great stuff. Uh, Karen says, Karen says, is there any connection between owning property and having four children? If you mentioned that. <laughs> I think some people are worried. Maybe Simon's worried about getting into property and then he's going to end up with four children. You know, maybe he doesn't want that. Um, Simon says, uh, he follows up for that. He says, great answer, Mike. Uh, you've convinced me. Let's do it. Okay, Ian, do you want to pick up the next question? We've had a, a few questions in that are, are kind of related to the other side of the fence, I guess, which is as potential investors. So, uh, and we've also had uh, developers asking, you know, what your fees are, what your charges are, what sort of interest rates you charge. Um, so, would you be able to maybe cover kind of both sides off? What, what, what's, what is the, the kind of rates you charge, but also what is in it for a potential investor if they wanted to invest with you? Sure, that's really important because that's basically the economics of the business so, uh, and the offer both sides of the marketplace. So I'll start first on the borrower side. Um, the borrower side, what, what we need to do is be really competitive in the market because otherwise we won't get the best projects. We want the best projects, so we are very competitive on price. We benchmark our pricing to the biggest, I, I very much don't say best in the market, the biggest in the market like someone like Shawbrook or similar. So we are on point with their prices and actually better once you really understand the hidden fees associated with their offers. So you have to do a full economic analysis. So technically our, our interest rate range to borrowers is between 0.62 and 0.93 a month. Okay, what does that mean in English? Look, most of our projects are between nine and 10% annual interest rate. Okay. Um, so that's the that's the borrower side and um, the investor side then and we are very it's really important on the uh, investor side to understand do i get a fair proportion of that nine or ten percent okay because that governs the risk profile of what you're investing in. because on the investor side capital is at risk okay it's different to a savings account okay um and we work very hard. It's all first charge secured senior debt uh, at, 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 at very good uh, loan to value measures. And if you look at our statistics page on our, uh, on our website, it's got all of the information uh, that, that you need. But basically lenders get between seven and 8%. Okay, so we take a 2% spread in the middle. Okay. Now that seven or 8%, um, we have, uh, we've been lending for six years. Uh, we've got 100% capital and interest payback track records. It's all first charge secured. We have gone through full cycle of repossessing and recovering everything. Uh, that experience is important. Um, and we see a lot of projects and don't fund that many. Um, so we, we filter that carefully. Um, and the best thing and uh, very, very popular on our, on our website are two additional elements. So, so you can just invest normally. You've got a normal account, a wallet on our platform. Uh, so, so that is a dedicated bank account for your funds. Uh, and you can just lend into projects. You can pick some projects. I like that one. I'm not so sure about that one. I like that one. I'm not so sure about that one. Okay. It's called a self-select model. When, when everything started going in seconds, we then introduced auto-invest. Because we saw a load of people on our platform saying, you know what, crowd property uh, are really rigorous in their due diligence. Okay, I just want a small part of loads of projects, of all of the projects I list, to diversify my investment. It's very good investment practice. Okay. So you can put money into a pot and say, right, can you spread that across the next 10 projects? Okay. So you've got an auto invest and a self select model. The cherry on top, or the cherries on top, are that we're a uh, we're a an HMRC uh, approved ISA manager, which means you can have a crowd property ISA, which means that your returns can be tax free. Now, if you get eight percent and you're a higher rate taxpayer, and that's in your ISA, that's the equivalent of getting thirteen point three percent outside of your ISA that you have to pay tax. And you won't get first charge security and you won't get a team of 30 with a brilliant tech system analyzing the hell out of every deal. So that's a great thing. Then also we uh, we have a lot of pension money on our platform as well. 
uh, a lot of SAS pensions and SIP pensions. Um, and so, you know, those tax free elements, those tax beneficial elements work really powerfully with the with the strong returns and track record that we've got. OK, yeah. let's uh, try and pick up a last couple of quick ones. Um, Joe asked a question. Joe asked a question earlier. I think we probably answered it. And I think he, he's shown that but he says, are there criteria that you look for or prefer to look for in development type, traditional land development, light industrial, larger scale projects? Basically, you'll do everything. Is that a yes or no? Yes. Yeah? We'll do everything and, and we'll help you with everything. Um, right. So we've got. I've got a question here uh, from where is it from Karen? Karen says, are you UK wide? Yes, we are. We okay. we fund in uh, England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland. Um, uh, Northern Ireland faces real. No, for some reason, the whole traditional lending uh, institution really doesn't like lending in Northern Ireland. We very much support it. Good stuff. There was a question that you, we answered for Gavin earlier. He says, fantastic answer. Thanks for that, Mike. Quick question here from Ritesh, which I think is a quick, a quick, simple one. Mike, at what point in the process should I be thinking of approaching you? Right, great question. Um, uh, you could come to us when you've got a price agreed and you've done all of your uh, detailed costings, you've got a beautiful presentation, you know, et cetera, et cetera. That's when one might normally apply for development finance. We're happy to, you, you know, don't send us a right move link and say, what do you think? Um, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, the, the point is, if you can fill in our form in under a few minutes, which it only takes a, a few minutes, you have the information that we can then form a view on. And we can give you confidence or we can give you the set of questions to further ask, or we can give you actually a guide to say there's not a deal here. OK, so, you know, you will have had to you know, identify what exact asset it is, uh, rough costings, rough GDV, et cetera. OK, but if you contact us before that negotiation is finished, we can help you get a better price. OK, and and that's because what that's what we wanted, because your competition fighting for that site will not have a finance offer in their back pocket to go to the vendor. And that means that you will get a better price. So it's a win for you. And it means that we will get better security. It's a win for us. You know, it just makes sense to work together. Good stuff. Good stuff. Can I pick up two final comments? Uh, just a nice little comment here. Karen says, uh, fab answer, Mike, you're going to be getting a call from us next week. So that's good. Thanks, Ian and Richie. Right. Uh, as always, brilliant. I've got one final question, which let's get a quick answer on this, Mike. I just want to pick this one up. This is really important, but let me just find it. Bear with me, because um, I like this. Quick answer on this, Mike, but it says, uh, this is from Raj, all development projects carry risk. What if a project looks like it's going south? Do you leave us to drown or provide support? Can you do a fairly quick answer on that one for us? Um, we will work with you because it's the right way to exit a project. Um, you know, that's the point. Everyone wants it to succeed. Okay. And we will come down to site. You know, my property director and co-founder has 35 years uh, experience in this. Area. He built millions of square foot in residential and commercial property. Okay. He doesn't like the running the business side. He is a property geek that loves property problems. OK, he'll come down and he'll help out. Um, you know, that's sending the big guns. If I was doing a development, he's the first person on my my team sheet. And, um, you know, that's that's the great thing about working with property people. Good stuff. Mike, I think that's all we've got time for. But we've had some lovely questions in, lovely answers and questions in and some lovely comments. Uh, just as a few for you, Mike, uh, Joe says, really great session, loves Mike, energy and ethos. Uh, Yvonne says, really great information. Thank you, Mike. Uh, so um, that's really good. People are liking it. Gavin says, thanks very much. What a great session today. You can see Mike's enthusiasm for what he does. It's great to see. And he has set me up for today. Thank you. Brilliant. Mike, thank you very much. Thanks for coming on. Guys, give me a quick wave if you would like us to bring Mike back at another point. No, no hands going up, Mike. I'm sorry, that's the, it's the one only show for you, my friend. Guys, people are typing in yes, 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 yes. Thanks very much. Bring him back, please, says Yoko. 
Um, yeah, we will we will try and get Mike. Would you come back again another time? No, no, haven't enjoyed it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's just bid our farewell to Mike. Mike, thank you very much. Um, uh, look forward to Thanks. speaking to you again soon. Okay. Cheers, Mike. Take care. Thank you. Guys, how good was that? Did you enjoy that? I mean, hopefully uh, you've enjoyed that. We did. Big apology that, that we did not get through all your questions. There's a heap of questions, but you know what we are. We always try and stick to time. Um, you know, please come back and ask those questions, uh, uh, Mike, for another time. Uh, we're more than happy to do that. Anyway, so I think that's it. Any final comments here before we wrap up? Uh, no, I, th well, I forgot to ask uh, Mike for how you get in touch with Crowd Property, but if uh, you go onto their website, uh, it's all fairly straightforward uh, and, and pretty intuitive uh, for whether you're either looking to invest or looking to uh, to borrow. Uh, but uh, but no, I think you know quite cruel of Dom to mention hairdressing uh, again, um, but I'm I'm okay with it. There are cool, cool our crowd here. I can tell you, and no, Mike, Mike's gone away. He's, he's. I mean, he's upset now because people have, uh, you know, taken the mick out of all of us. But you know, you don't want to do that. But Mike's details, crowd property details, will be up on uh, on the site, up on our website, and on YouTube, where you can watch repeats of this. So uh, Mike's details will be on there. We get his contact details, so you can get hold of his company. I like Mike. I mean, I've, I've listened to Mike present a huge amount of times. I just think he's a very genuine guy and someone you can deal with. That last question I thought was perfect. Those guys will not let you drown. They are property people and they know property people. So they will look after you. Uh, everything I hear about them is good. So uh, definitely reach out. Guys, uh, we're coming to the end now. Please, if you think this is useful, bring a friend, invite a friend, or if it's not a friend, just bring them along. Ask them to come along and register for this session. Uh, we're more than happy to build this team. We love all of you out there. Obviously, if you're not there, I mean, Jen, we do love you, actually. And we love you more than my family, to be fair, to some extent, although I don't think they're listening. So I wouldn't say that when I get home. But please bring a friend. We want to build the show. If you're not part of our Facebook group, which is business owners creating wealth through property development, then please uh, try and link up with us on Facebook and we'll get you in there. It's the only place really that Ian and I contribute to stuff. We're often putting interesting stuff in there, often very interesting interviews with various people, some of our students and so on. So please uh, come on come on board in there if you'd like to. Uh, tag us on Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is you have to do out there on social media. We'd love you to, to do that as well. Um, also, as a final thing, we, we often talk about uh, it and people mention today is now a good time to get into development. Uh, there is an hour long webinar uh, that we put together. We could take all this session just going through it. It's on our website. It's called Why Now. If you want to go into there, it talks about why now is a good time that come up today. And it talks about how you can get into development. So if you've got an hour to spend, pop onto our website. It's on the homepage. Click on the tab Why Now. There's a free webinar on there. Um, I'm not going to try and say you anything. Don't worry about that. Um, go through that. Have a listen. That might help you to tell you where the opportunities are and how you can get into development. I think we're pretty much done. So guys, thank you all for coming on today. Hopefully that was good. Please let us know if you think that was good uh, in the chat box as we go. Yes, love listening to Mike says Raj, um, uh, Yoko's uh, smiley face, happy face, etc. Trish says, thank you again, Ian and Richie. That was so interesting. Have a great weekend. You too, Trish, my friend. Jin says, uh, you're talking too fast. What is your website? Uh, have it on screen on the back www.propertyceo.co.uk. I have to talk fast, Jin, because I've got to get through this. I've got to get you guys away. Mike, uh, Julia says, great, uh, great session. Thank you very much. Clive says, excellent. Um, and Raj says, what another great, uh, sorry, Ranjit says, what another, another great webinar. Thank you very much. Good session, says Jess. Thank you so much. See you Tuesday, says Karen. Next webinar, Tuesday evening, seven o'clock. See you then. Have a great Saturday. Goodbye. Take care, bye.